everyone, my name is Matt Perner and people do say that the number 13 is a bit of an unlucky number, but I think a great lucky number will be 2013. So welcome to the first show here on Shy TV for the new year, episode number 43 to be exact. Our musical guest right to my side here is the great multi-instrumentalist Shane Phillip. He of the didgeridoo, guitar, percussion, vocals done all at the same time. He really is a great Vancouver Island music treasure. So uh, stay tuned for more of his musical magic as well as an interview with the guy that the song Magic Man was written about, Mr. Andrew Roberts. Also on the show this week, what makes a great leader? Well, if you say exactly 1,000 milliliters, well, you weren't listening very closely. I'm talking Lee Durs, and we're going to learn about a great event being put on by Leadership Vancouver Island. It's a great program that provides leadership theory, training, and support for prospective leaders in Vancouver Island. And again, they're putting on a wonderful event to learn more about, I believe it's conflict resolution. So if you don't go, well, I'm going to beat you up. So make sure you check out that. Lorraine Jensen will be here to talk to the dashing and erstwhile chair, Patrick Ross, the chair of the Leadership VI Curriculum Committee. Keeping with education, if it is true that different people learn in different ways, well maybe the age of students who learn just by listening to lectures, that age might be over and maybe learning should be uh, combined literacy, music, action, numbers and more. So Joan Heron is going to speak with author and teacher Zoe Clement of a diverse teaching and learning theory called Multiple Intelligences. Personally, I'm still trying to find my first one. Anyways, we're also going to meet uh, author and cook Rose Brown, who's also known as Aunt Jamaica. We're going to find more about her books as well as some of her favorite recipes. I did go up to her before the show and ask her about her favorite chicken recipe, and she looked back at me and she just said, jerk. So I don't know, I was trying to be polite, I guess. Anyways, we also got segments on Mackenzie Brown's new book called Walking on Eggshells, Health and Wellness, NFP Insurance with our local Rastafari, Bob Fenty, who's gonna have a really nice new shirt. Uh, but Anna Bosa will be kicking things off with a look at astrology. And if the Zodiac's not gonna tell me who to pick first in my hockey pool, well, maybe it'll be able to tell us what's gonna go on with 2013. So let's get off. This leader wants to know what's going on. It's the show, and it's right here on Shaw TV. Dodds Furniture's The Show is brought to you by Dodds Furniture and Mattress. Now open in Nanaimo. Well, welcome back <laughs> and a Happy New Year, everyone. And today with me, we have Liberty Arrakis from Lobelia's Lair. And what happens in New Year? Everybody wants to know what's going to happen with their astrology for the New Year. And Liberty is going to tell us a little bit about that, and I cannot wait because I want to know what's in store for my sign. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for having me, Anna. Oh, tell us, tell us, tell us. <laughs> well, what's exciting about 2013 is that we survived 2012. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and so we are now into Thank what, goodness. yes, <laughs> what we would consider to be um, our golden age. So right. there's a lot of good things for all the signs. And when we start off with Aquarius, we are in the age of Aquarius, as we know that famous song. That famous song. That famous song. That everybody loves. And it's a wonderful lyric to sort of refer to because it really speaks about what we are going to expect for this year. Okay. That uh, positive flow, uh, more sensitivity, more awareness, more community, and specifically for the sign for Aquarius, it's really exciting because it's less work and a lot more play. Oh, they'll like that, won't they? <laughs> Absolutely. <have> that <laughs> so it's not so much that studious um, focus, but it's more about laying back, letting things go, going with the flow and allowing things to come up more spontaneously. So um, from Aquarius, move, we move into Pisces. Pisces. So, um, we have a Pisces here too. <laughs> yes, we do. And who might that our, be? <laughs> our Melissa Shaw. <laughs> and so Pisces. Melissa Hall, pardon me, on Shaw. Career opportunities are basically the focus um, for okay. the Pisces sign. So it speaks about a year for expansion and okay. the ability to take on new projects and new challenges. Uh, new challenges. I wonder what Melissa's going to challenge. New <laughs> challenge for Melissa might be this year. Um, it also speaks about recognition. Okay. And so being recognized for one's abilities and their gifts and talents. So that always gives, you know, somebody the good pat on the back. 
Uh, we Which moved is well in. deserved. Absolutely. <laughs> we move into Aries, and Aries um, basically steps again away from the public eye and is more focused at home. So yeah, like family home relations, okay. relationships, looking at building um, more connections with people from a distance, you know, mm -hmm. so friendships. That are far away, reconnecting. Absolutely. So it's kind of more home-based, more relaxed, and cozy. Um, like and that. then we have Taurus. Taurus the bull. You always you hear, know. yeah, Taurus is a strong sign. It is, it is a not? really strong sign, and it's an earth sign, so they're very well-rooted signs. Right. They don't kind of move with as much ease as some of the other zodiac signs, so they need a little bit of movement and momentum behind <laughs> them. It's so kind of like their sign, isn't that, it? That's it. So, and what's exciting about that is that it's all about romance this year for Taurus. Mm. So, yeah, it's the candlelight dinners and the whining and dining and oh, enjoying those um, intimate moments with loved ones. So, oh, as the uh, Taurus, Taurusian, the Taurusians? That's would that be right. Called? They would be. They yeah. will love their year. It's I sort of the Italian year. flair of the Taurusians. <laughs> the Taurians are Taurusians. <laughs> that I um, can understand. <laughs> Gemini really is. As often as Gemini is, they're sort of um, a bit on the contrary side because okay. they're conflicted so much. So they're the twins. So they move from one decision to another and flip-flop, but then when they really make their commitment, they're very strong in their commitment. So with the Geminis, adventure is the Ooh. theme this year. So spontaneity, not giving in to routine, um, even though their desire may be to do what's comfortable, it's about moving out of that comfort zone. Out of, the and out of their shell almost. Out of their shell. And really mm -hmm. taking on new challenges. So adventure obviously could mean travel as right, well. Right. And um, if something makes their heart flutter, they should go after it. After it. And now comes my favorite sign because that's what I am. And that would be cancer. <laughs> and cancer being, of course, the softy of all the signs. <laughs> that emotional sensitivity mm -hmm. it's a water sign so it is about it is, being yeah. in the flow of things so for cancer um, this year it's about gleaning rewards from building really strong connections with people okay. so it's an exciting time for cancer um, they're moving into um, sort of their own in a new way Wow that's exciting mm -hmm. thank you we're gonna come back and we're gonna finish the rest of them but right now, what we're going to do is we're going to Lorraine. And Lorraine is our Sagittarian here on set. And she has to wait to hear what's up for her this year. Thank you, Anna. No well, problem. we all know that Sagittarians are the life of the party. What else is there to say? <laughs> right, Liberty? I agree, <laughs> being one myself. <laughs> My guest today is Mr. Patrick Ross. Welcome, Patrick. Thank you very much, Lane. Now, I've heard that you are a huge community leader. <laughs> I've heard that many times since we've had our first conversation from different people. And Matt, this, e this, this evening, called you dashing. <laughs> so, I I'm, I'm welcome and I, I look forward to this time that we have together. Thank you. Perhaps more importantly, I'm a Pisces. So. Oh, there you go. Mm. The year of love, I hear. Un understandably. <laughs> so, you are the past vice president of VIU. Correct. And the past president of Leadership Vancouver Island and currently um, build the curriculum for that program? That's right, yes. So what is Leadership VI? Len uh, Leadership Vancouver Island is really a little uh, volunteer organization dedicated to promoting leadership skills and leadership development in individuals. We have a great motto, leading self, leading others, leading community. Nice. We put on an outstanding uh, experience for folks over a year's period of time where we start with two days of retreat and then one day a month for eight months and then a celebratory completion. And we really actually develop the inner strengths and, and values and, and core belief systems of individuals so they can be better in their lives and better at their work. Nice. Yeah, it's a, a very positive and progressive program. And we've enjoyed nine years of success here in the Nanaimo region, and we have almost 200 alumni now. Wow, yeah. fabulous. I think leadership is so important, and it's not something that, certainly when I was going to school, nobody ever taught us how to be a leader. 
No, and I think that people misunderstand leadership. They often see it as the boss or the head of the organization, when in actual fact our, our organization believes that leadership is in all of us and yes. what we ought to be doing to be effective uh, organizational leaders is promote that skill set within each individual, whether you work at the front counter, whether you're a decision maker, with, and in order to build strong teams, you need leadership. So it just really makes a lot of sense to a lot of people. Mm. And some people believe that you're born with it, and other people believe that, mm. you know, it's, it's a learned skill. Yeah. Well, that, we could get into that discussion for the rest of the evening. We uh, can. <laughs> but I do, I do believe that we can make a difference and change people's behaviors and enhance their skill sets over time through good, solid professional development. Fabulous. And one of the things that you're doing through mm. Leadership Vancouver Island is hosting a speaker series. Yes. Uh, outside of our outstanding program, we have taken on this year a speaker series, and our first speaker is coming up on February 4th at the Port Theatre, Stacey Holloway, and she has an amazingly uh, attractive topic for most people who uh, want to provide opportunities for their employees to grow. It's entitled, uh, Dealing with Difficult People Who Drive You Nuts. Now, has that ever happened to you? Have you ever dealt with someone like that in your life? Today? <laughs> yes, every day, right? Yes, I'm married, I'm a parent, I have a job. And Precisely. Precisely. So we think that this type of topic is just an outstanding opportunity for people who are out there in the world who want to enhance their skill sets in more effectively dealing with people who are difficult and uh, drive you crazy sometimes. Uh, this seminar, put on by Stacy Holloway, one of North America's most sought after speakers, is going to be an outstanding opportunity. Fabulous. Well, yeah. thank you. So she's going to be here on February the 4th. Yes, February the 4th. At the, the Port 4th. Theatre. Correct. $20 for a ticket. Right. And if you want more information, I've been to the Port Theatre website. So yes. it's www.porttheatre.com. And you can purchase a ticket from there and or read all about Yes. The event. Yes, exactly right. And uh, we just would really encourage organizations in the Nanaimo region to consider this seminar for their employees. What an opportunity to send them for a couple of hours and come away with skill sets that they can try the next day to improve their relationship building at work. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So thank you for that, Patrick. And now I'm going to pass it over to Joan, who is talking about multiple intelligences. Thanks, Lorraine. And we're also going to be talking about multiple intelligences, and uh, it's kind of a form of leadership. It's a way of dealing with difficult people sometimes or difficult situations. I'm here with Zoe Clement, and uh, she's a teacher and an author, and she has a great book on the subject of multiple intelligences. And uh, we're going to have her website here so you can take a look at that. But she's going to give us a, an idea of what, how to introduce multiple intelligences into the classroom. But also if you're a homeschooler uh, or if you're teaching your kids at home, we're going to be talking about math because that's always a, a challenge, isn't it? Math is one of those subjects that everyone thinks about as a pen and paper subject. So that's why I'm going to use that today as an example. Great. We're going to demo it. It's, we're, we're not going to use a board. No, no boards. And absolutely, multiple intelligences, about, it's about shaking things up. It's about using common objects. So I brought an apple. I think um, I that. that's, that's an easy everyday object to use for a fractions lesson. Mm -hmm. So for and example, every teacher has an apple. So. Every teacher should have an apple on their desk every day. Mm -hmm. So I would give each student an apple and I would ask one student to represent a whole. I would ask another student to represent half, a third, quarters, the list goes on. Um, okay, so we're going to be covering some different ways that kids are learning. So tell me about some of the ways that, what, well, multiple intelligences. And so we have an apple, we're going to be learning about math, but what are you actually appealing to in this? So multiple intelligences basically says that people learn in eight different ways and that people express themselves in eight different ways. You have linguistics, so the word smart, picture smart, people who are good with colors and spaces and who like to draw, body smart, it's the kinesthetic students, the one who like to be up on their feet, hands on, logic mathematical smart, those are the number crunchers who love patterns and charts. Um, then there's the music smart students, not just plain music, because I wouldn't consider myself a musician, but I enjoy listening to music. I enjoy connecting classical music when I'm reading a book right. to feelings. So, so tell me about the, the cards here you've got, the recipe cards. So I picked up these at the grocery these store. These are just common things that you've got. Absolutely. I have a flyer, 
And these are things that you can incorporate into any lesson, sticky okay. notes. So for again, going back to fractions, I would have my students write a fraction on a sticky note and then put them in a number line on the whiteboard. Or I would have them tear fraction strips, tear this piece of paper in half, tear it in thirds. I brought in pictures that I printed and cut out or uh, that you could find in an old magazine. Looking, this is from a earth science class looking at weathering and erosion. So basically, multiple intelligences is about using common objects to think outside the box and okay. shake up the and classroom. So these guys, how, how are you going to use the, your recipe cards when you're teaching math? When I'm teaching math, what I'll do is I'll give uh, each group a pair of uh, these recipe cards. And for instance, on the back it says, make 60 cookies, serves 10. I would say, well, I don't want 60 cookies, I only want 10 cookies. Can you revamp the recipe on the back? And they would be tasked with revamping the recipe. Okay, so basically what people can do is they can go over to your website and they can find out all the different things that they can do and you've got all sorts of different ideas and you have a book as well. I have a book and the book is designed, um, a buzzword in the education field is differentiated instruction and the book is all about meeting students uh, needs at their level. So the book just goes into all the creative ways that you can shake up the classroom and have fun. Okay, so shaking up the classroom. Absolutely. So what we're going to do is, we've got the website, we've got the web address there, so people okay. can go there. Perfect. And then, now we're going to shake up some other things. We're going to shake up some people, get them back into uh, activities that they can do after the Christmas break. And we're going to go to Brian now and have him talk about that. Thanks, Joan. And with me today, I have Rohan Watson, who's a certified health and wellness coach. And he's going to talk about how we might get that energy back after our indulgences of the of the holidays and uh, Rohan you've got some key points you want to stress when people want to get that energy back and and get back into a a more well type of lifestyle right <laughs> well Brian you know um you know over the holidays right we tend to maybe use up our energy right and then after the holidays we're trying to get back all our energy at once um, I like to tell people just to take it slow, start off slowly, you know, take it step by step, right? Instead of trying to just, for example, exercise. A person wants to lose weight, so they probably say, you know what, I'm going to go to the gym and work out for an hour. And then a few weeks after they're sore, they give up. So instead of going for an hour, I say just go for 10 minutes. You know, if you like walking, go for a walk. If you don't like walking, do something you like. Go to the gym, go swimming, you know, do something that you like. Also, sleeping. We find that a lot of people who are lacking energy is because they don't have a, they don't get enough sleep. So, for example, we want to make sure we get at least seven hours sleep. So that exercise, exercise is going to help you get that sleep. Ah, awesome. Yes, exercise will definitely help us to sleep better, right? And, and the next item would, would be fresh air. You know, sometimes we're feeling fatigued, we have a headache and stuff like that. You know, but all we all we really need is just maybe just go outside, take some deep breaths. You know, do some deep breathing, breathing from from your nostrils, from your diaphragm, get that fresh air, that oxygen to your brain, you know? And another thing I would suggest is toxins. Sometimes our bodies is filled up with toxins and waste material, and it's not being eliminated fast enough, right? So, so that will also hold us back. You know, it, it will rob us of our energy that we need to use, right? So we have here some fruits, and a lot of people are into detox and so forth, right? Uh, which is good. Right, because we want to make sure that we have proper circulation, we have all the energy and stuff like that. So, diet is also very important. And for time's sake, I'm just going to talk a little bit here about diet. Um, we have here some pineapple. I have pineapple, some bananas, papaya, and some kiwi. Now, the combination of these fruits right here is excellent for detoxification. But also, this is good. They're providing good nutrients to the body. For, for example, pineapple and the papaya. It's excellent for, the enzyme, excellent for the stomach. They provide wonderful enzymes. But not just that, a combination of these right here, while they're detoxifying the body, they're providing a good source of energy. So there's, there's certainly a lot of natural sugars in this. Yes. And yes. so you get your carbohydrates, which give you the energy for your exercise. Mm -hmm. Better yet, you're saying, do that exercise outdoors. Um, and, and you mentioned earlier when we were talking about the importance of hydrating. Mm -hmm. 
So is there any special kinds of things people should look at? They, there's all these choices of <laughs> sports drinks and special drinks right. and, and uh, shakes and everything else. What should they be looking at? You don't want all those things have some benefits. But the best, the best thing that we could do for tissues and for, and for our body is water. What, Just regular water. Regular water. Some people ask me, how much water should you drink? Well, it depends, right? I like to tell people, check the color of your urine yeah. or, or, or the smell of your urine. Yeah. If you go to the washroom and the urine is yellow or orange, you know you need more water, right? Um, hydration also is excellent for the blood. So our, our, blood, our blood is not sluggish when we drink enough water. It's good for our bones, our brain, our cells. You know, okay. we can't live without it. So you're, you, uh, just to recap again, you mentioned the exercise and mm -hmm. certainly the sleep. One helps the other. Um, and, and in hydration, um, to, to remove all those toxins. And certainly the diet. And this, this when you talk about these items, there right. are a lot of, there's a lot of fluid and water in these items That's as well. That's right. That's right. And the next thing here also with these fruits, right? They're natural, but not just that, they have fiber in them. And what happens, you know, for example, I might drink some juice, regular juice, right? Yep. And the sugar will go straight to my blood. So I get, a, I get a dose of energy right away. However, with these fruits now, with all this fiber, the fiber will release the, the sugar slowly into the bloodstream. So what happens, my energy will, last, will, will last a longer period of time. So that's right. certainly better for you. For you. Um, People can contact you, and, and I think we're showing the website uh, at your website, which is Rohan at WatsonSolution.com. That's right. And you're based out of right here on the Mid Island in Qualicum? That's right, in Qualicum Beach. And people can contact you at the phone number listed here. Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, there's your start for the year. Uh, something you can start to do instead of going crazy with your exercise only. It's all a part of balance of everything. So before we move on a little bit, we'll just head straight over to Shane Phillip singing his next song, which is Connections. Running to the forest, accelerated. Mind and my body's one Follow when a mountain stream Senses are alive Anxiety subsiding Get so important We never let go It's our link to Mother Nature That's the link to our soul So much like a teeter-totter water Sometimes seems so crazy On its way to seek and level Walking down a busy city street Electronic leashes tethered proudly to our hands Even so, in touch with this world Sadly disconnected from the land It gets so important That we never lose control It's our link to Mother Nature That's the link to our soul Sometimes seems so crazy on its 
best way to seek and level. connected to that one I'll tell you boy that's got me just a shucking and a jiving here and we're connected tonight because we're going to talk about some connections with insurance and please welcome tonight if you will Bill Brendan who's with the Western Financial Group and we're going to talk about the importance of boards of directors of nonprofit organizations having some insurance what is that all about Bill tell us well, mainly the difference with societies is that they need coverage for their board in order for volunteers to get involved in what it is the society is intending to do. And for a person who's volunteering, they're concerned about where they might get sued for something they've done. Um, and, you know, this is where in my career as an insurance broker, I've looked to try and dispel the myths about directors and officers coverage as, as compared to general liability insurance coverage. Well, there is uh, quite a difference a between, difference. isn't there? Yes. There is. The society still needs to have general liability insurance, but it also needs to have that directors and officers coverage. General liability insurance is, is mainly for bodily injury and property damage claims, and directors and officers coverage is for something else, and that is the breach of duties Example, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a board member uh, down at Lake Couch and on our RV resort. Yes. And I have, I, I'm sure, I, I know our group has insurance for me as a board member, but I think I also have to have coverage as well for third party. Do I not for my property? You do, that yes. That's general liability coverage. And it often gets mixed up with directors and officers. So <clears throat> this is just a primer on this difference, but right. mainly the directors and officers coverage is to protect that director or officer or volunteer person from breaches that they might have, they might perform in terms of what they do for the society. They could breach uh, in terms of diligence, just simply doing their job doing properly as a director. Better. They could be disloyal. There could be a conflict of interest arise yeah, because forbid, of what they do. That should happen, yeah. Well, I mean, never know, but it could, yes. And it protects them from an accusation that might affect somebody who gets harmed, not bodily injured, but harmed in terms of their ability to do work. They could be incorrectly dismissed from a job by a director or officer, a leader of that society. And that's the cause of action that's protected by that policy. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, that's the difference. So, so is this something that it gets expensive, uh, Bill? No, it's, it's usually a third or so of the cost for a typical volunteer organization around here, a third or so of the cost of general liability coverage to add directors and officers coverage. Okay, so, so it's not a major expense that no. any nonprofit really should be considering it. Yes, they, they yeah. should have both. And often they don't because they don't understand the difference in what the perils are that are being insured between these two. Interesting. So uh, they, how far should they be going with this kind of coverage? Well, in, in, in terms of dollars or a dollar figure that's involved or? It depends on the organization and its volume. It depends on factors like does the organization employ people or does it have just Big volunteers difference. working for it? Big difference. Big difference there. Yeah. Um, I am always available in the evening to talk to boards of directors about both their operations and about how these two types of policy coverages will suit them and how they should be arranged. So you would be, you would be willing to attend? Yes. Board meetings? Certainly I would. Any, well, any board meeting, I'm sure, but uh, any particular uh, time frame, Bill? Any evenings you're available? Any evening, give me uh, a week's notice and, uh, and I would be able to I come and talk to their board. You can put on the screen uh, Bill's phone, 250-758-3343 uh, if you'd like more information. And Bill would be really, really happy to come out and, and talk to your board and get you on board uh, with some coverage so that you don't have any of these problems that we talked about. So now let's go over to uh, we're going to have some Jamaica man cooking. Uh, yeah, let's go and see what Brian and his guest is up to. Brian, how are you? Thanks, Bob. I have with me Rose Brown, and we're talking about her book, and she's going to do a demonstration on her Back to Basics with Rose. And it says your authentic Jamaican recipes and more. And Rose, we're doing the more part. This is part of the recipes of items you've 
developed right here in Canada. Yes. Okay, so what are we going to, to start off, what are we preparing today? We are going to do um, fruit squares. Mm -hmm. And so um, I have here two cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking powder and half a teaspoon of salt. Here we have one and a half cups of sugar, two eggs are whipped with two teaspoons of vanilla. Okay. Showing you how easy it is to, you could have, um, people could call and in an hour's time they're coming and you could have this ready. Okay. It's that fast. Two cups of fruit cocktail with the juice in it. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to fold this in nicely to incorporate the whole thing. So as easy as it is, you're making it just with a fork. Just with a fork. But to finish it, I will use this spatula to make sure I get the sides and the bottom. Okay. But just uh, not even a minute, you're mixing here. Okay. Yes. And then we're going to pour it into the Pyrex dish. It's 8 by 12. And we're just going to bake it in the oven at three, um, 350 for about 35 minutes or till okay. done anyway. Okay. So I'm going to change this now. Now, you told me you developed this book. The whole reason was your, your family told you you had to get some of your recipes down or they wouldn't get them. Yes. They said uh, it would be a shame to, for me to die because I'm, I'm going 81. And so then they wouldn't have the recipes, neither would anyone else. So they thought it was wise that I actually did this. And some of our friends did also told me that. So okay. that's how I started. Okay, so we're going to put this into the pan and then we'll put it right. into the oven. That's right. This is done. Now you top this off with a, uh, uh, a topping as well. Yes. A syrup. Mm -hmm. We're going to do that. I'm going to show you how that's done. Bob's already eyeing all of this here. Ah, uh, it's coming. <laughs> so we make sure it's all nice and level here. Okay. Right. It's as simple as this, but it's delicious, I'll tell you. So this is baked separately, then you apply the topping later. Yeah, absolutely. And at first, I must let you all know that all my recipes, whether it's dessert or whatever, I take all the calories out. So No calories? Oh, okay. yeah, no. Well, we don't have to worry about the... Uh, Do I look like I bake with cal calories? Should I comment? No. <laughs> don't, don't. Okay, so we're going to put that into the oven. Right. And then we'll come back with uh, a finished product. Yeah, but I'm just going to show you the topping sure. is a half a cup of butter, half a cup of brown sugar, a half a cup of cream, and one cup of flaked coconut. And you cook that till it's, you know, just nice and hot. And put it on the The, the cake comes cake. out, the minute it comes out, you, this is hot and you just spread it on. Okay. And it comes up, voila, Kay. great. Well, let's come back and look at that then. Okay. Thanks, we'll be right back. And I'm gonna send it over to uh, Andrew, who's got an interview with Shane. Well, thank you very much, Brian. Um, I hope everyone made some New Year's resolutions this year. Uh, my resolution was to end the NHL lockout, and I accomplished that in less than a week. So you can send your gifts and thank yous to, to the Shaw office here, and uh, that'll be great, thanks. Uh, but I'm here with uh, musician extraordinaire, Shane Phillip. Uh, thanks for being on the show, Shane. Thank you. Here to my left is uh, my didgeridoos. I made these uh, on Quadra Island and uh, they're in two different keys. And so I incorporate the didgeridoos with the djembe drum all the way from Africa. These ones are also made, uh, this is Arrington. These are Arrington djembe drums that I play. Uh, here is a, uh, a ukulele. You know, often you hear your ukulele with didgeridoo. And uh, this particular ukulele um, comes from Hawaii. Well, this one doesn't come from Hawaii. This one comes from Quadra Island. And, and then there's me, and I was, I was made in Canada too. So all this is Canadian, genuine island boy. Yeah. 
got a, uh, you're working on a new album, I hear. I'm working on it, yeah. I'm, I'm about halfway through. Um, writing lots of songs about life, love, nature, all that kind of stuff. Human nature, nature in the wild. And it's, it's kind of a roots reggae song, re uh, album rather. So it's, it's heavy on the roots, the natural. You could play it on the beach, you know, live, or else you could listen to it on the album. So. Excellent. Yeah. Right on. So and you're, you've got a tour coming up, I hear. You're going to be going around the island and I the am. mainland? Yeah, and I'm kicking it off in Nanaimo. And uh, I'm going to start in Nanaimo, then work my way across Canada, well, Western Canada, all the way to uh, Lloydminster, and then work my way back. Doing a lot of the ski hills, got a brand new pair of skis, so I'm, I'm psyched about the ski hills. Right on. And uh, yeah, it's going to be great. I'm excited about that. Excellent. Um, you've got a special guest performing with you at the Queen Show in Nanaimo? I do. Willow Friday. She's going to be lighting it up with the poi. So she's, gonna, she's got some special costumes and special uh, dances planned for the evening to go with the tribal sounds of the didgeridoo and the drums and, and, and uh, you know, encouraging everybody else to come dance along too. So Excellent. Yeah. And you've, uh, you, put, you put on quite the show. Um, people who haven't seen you perform before, what can they expect at a Shane Phillips show? Well, a little bit of everything. I mean, primarily I'm a singer-songwriter, so there's a lot of lyrical content to mostly all my songs. But then um, I get, once people start dancing, they get the groove of the, the djembe drum, the slide guitars that I play, the didgeridoo. It turns into a bit of a, a tribal frenzy. And, and y the thing about the didgeridoo, of course, is you feel it as much as you hear it. So it just kind of goes right through you. And with the sound system at the Queens, it's going to really go through you. So, uh, you know, most people will be up dancing and relentlessly um, without holding anything back. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, so the Queen show is January 25th. That's a Friday evening. It's an early show. It's going to start around 8 o'clock. And uh, you can get your tickets uh, at a few different outlets. Uh, you can also visit uh, shanephillip.com uh, to hear more from Shane. He's also on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, SoundCloud and YouTube. Check them out there. And uh, you're going to play another song for us, are you? Yeah. Gonna, Excellent. Gonna What's it called? It. It's uh, This one's called Outside the Box. Perfect. Take yeah. it away, Shane. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you. Since 1970, but buying from the farmers, hiring local, giving back to the community. Now we're bigger, still moving to the sprawl. We're not building on the mall, give you more for your money. This city's gonna look the same as any other city around if we sit down. Outside the box, do get more pay, less regress. Thinking it's progress. Give it up for community needs. Instead, I get sucked in by the, the corporate greedy. Greedy hands on, a heavy hands gonna push and push, push us around. If enough of us stick together, we can keep this city feeling like a small town. Instead of sitting down, down, down. We gotta think outside the box. Think outside the box. We gotta think outside the box. Think outside the box. We gotta think outside the box. Ooh, yeah. Think outside the box. We gotta think outside the box. Think outside the box. And it'll be so.
Well, through the magic of television, we have come back with a baked fruit cake, or actually fruit squares, and I have Rose Brown with me. Rose, you want to pull that out? Oh, yeah, for sure. This Oops. is the finished product. And this has the uh, syrup on it, which, as you said before, is no calorie, low no, calorie. No, absolutely. Okay. You, yeah, Complete no with problem. the butter and brown sugar. Oh right? yeah, no. Absolutely, you can eat without any, you know, fear at all. Just, okay. just do it. And you know what? I thought I smelled coffee. So voila, we are out for some coffee good and treats fruit and squares. fruit squares. Now. Um, this book and this Back to Basics with Rose is available right around the mid, right around here in the Nanaimo. In the Nanaimo, yes, yeah. And uh, they're, they're, all the locations are available on your website, which yes, is interestingly AuntJamaica.com. It's not on that one. It's, um, I don't have it on that, unfortunately. However, um, I'll have to do something about that. Won't okay. I? Yes. <laughs> And they can re email you, and there's are your emails on the screen. The as well. email, absolutely, Good. perfect, yeah. So, so all the close bookstores and some of the grocery stores around. Grocery town. stores, two country grocers, um, the one on Gabriola Island, um, the grocery store there, yeah, and um, the um, gift store downtown mm -hmm. on Front Street, yeah. Hey, I see. <laughs> I You'll knew, get yours, Matt. I You'll knew get yours. we had a bad one here. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's this is just great. Yeah, I think he, I think you're going to really enjoy this. Nice and moist. The whole crew is watching this. I know that. I know. I think so too. <laughs> so again, everything from the Jama traditional Jamaican recipes mm -hmm. to many other local things that you've put together over Absolutely. the years. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I raised my children on them. Yeah. Okay, published yeah. here in Western Canada, right in Winnipeg. That's right. And um, Oops, don't forget it. to pick up that book. Certainly a chance to do that. We put some eggs in this dish, but we're walking on eggshells. And we have Lorraine to talk about that uh, right here, um, right now. We are here talking about walking on eggshells today. My second guest for the day is Mackenzie Brown. Welcome, Mackenzie. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Mackenzie isn't your real name. No, it isn't. And Mackenzie, that's your pen name. Yes. And you're here to promote a book that you've written, Walking on Eggshells. That's right. And this book is about living with psychological abuse and codependency, correct? Yes. Now, I too have walked a similar path. And I was taught that codependency means being addicted to people, places, and things. That's right. There's many different titles for codependency. You can look it up on the internet and see many different meanings. To sum it up briefly would mean that you love other people more than yourself. And it can become very unhealthy, especially if you're with an unhealthy person. And that was your story? Yes, it was. You got involved in a very unhealthy relationship when, and I, I'm reading the book, and it's fabulous, by the way. Thank you. And you put yourself, your life, in danger. Yes, I did. In order to be pleasing to this other person. That's correct, yeah. And I think we see it a lot, um, not just women. It can be a character trait that anyone can have. Any um, economics, it doesn't matter where you're from, what your background is. Um, it comes from putting other people's needs ahead of your own. And then we get miserable and angry and resentful and we wonder why. That's right. Yes, I know that very well. <laughs> um, so you have written, you've, had, you've, 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 you've walked your path. Yes. And you're continuing to walk that path. And you've, you've written a book. Mm -hmm. And you've dedicated, you and your husband Scott and your son have dedicated a year of your life to go on the road and share the message. That's promote right. the book. It's not so much about promoting the book as sharing the message. Is that correct? That's correct. We've been traveling throughout BC since August, working in lots, many towns as we've made our way to Nanaimo, working mostly with BC Transitional Housing, otherwise known as the Women's Shelter, raising awareness as well as some fundraising and working with many aspects of the BC government, trying to make change, trying to change some of the statistics that we have here in BC. Why? 
I take it very personally. I spent time in the women's shelter. I believe the police in my community and the women's shelter saved my life and my children's life. We know that approximately 10 calls a day come into the Nanaimo RCMP surrounding wow. domestic violence. We know that a child in Canada is being hit by a parent every three minutes. So my son Toby and my husband Scott and I have decided that we want to be a part of changing those statistics. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You know, from a mother and, you know, somebody that has walked that path. And since we've been here this evening, we've bumped into somebody else in the room that has said, oh my goodness, that's my story. Mm -hmm. And it's more common than we think. And I think it takes somebody like you to share your story in order for other people to voice theirs. Is that... Victims don't often speak up. It's, it can be embarrassing, shameful, as well as they can be in danger. I'm not actually from BC, I'm from Alberta, which gives me the ability to speak up on behalf of the victims in your community who are otherwise frozen in the silent fear of domestic abuse. Speaking of which, mm -hmm. on January the 24th, you are putting together an event. We are, we are being hosted along by your group, I Love My Life. Um, and we'll be having an awareness evening, as well as we call it walking on eggshells and abuse by chocolate. So if you come out, we'll be having lots of baking available, as well as some fantastic speakers. It is a baking competition. Rose. So if there's any bakers out there, we would love to have you donate a dessert. There will be plaques to hang in your business or to show your family for first, second, and third place. There is a $2 admission charge, and those funds, all of them, will be going to Haven House to support the victims who are in safe, safe care now. So to wrap it up, um, Haven House will be there speaking, the yes. RCMP will be there speaking, you'll be there speaking, yes. I'm gonna host the event. It's gonna be at the Vancouver Island University, building 250. Yes. Uh, room 125, $2 admission, January 24th at 7 p.m. Yes. Lots of great speakers, lots of great education, lots of learning. We hear there are lots of people coming out. So it's going to be a great event. Thank you so much, Mackenzie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for having us. And what's your, what's your birth sign? Capricorn. We've already had yours. Tell me what's going to happen to me this year, Anna. Capricorn. We're looking forward to that. We're back again with Liberty here. And before we continue on with the, the rest of the astrology, I just would love if you could just explain what some of this, mm -hmm. these goodies are here. Absolutely. And where we can get them. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you can get them at Lobelia's Lair. <laughs> and um, we have calendars, especially, of course, in January of 2013. We of have course. the new calendars out. And people and that... And you brought one of two. People so. that are very much interested in astrology must pick up their 2013 calendar um, and along with their pocket planners because people like the detail that they get from these kinds of things so that they can do their own charts and follow their okay. um, their own information for the whole year for right? the whole year and so there's Excellent. books and there's uh, little learning cards so all of these things are available and, and these more. are pretty special yeah too. I pulled those out of my cupboard <laughs> on my way this afternoon um, those are the astrology set they came out probably in the 60s sometime Very when cool. before we were born. <laughs> of course. <laughs> They were. And we also do readings as well. So okay. we can do all kinds of readings, but we do astrology charts also. Okay, and you also have a website, of course. We Lobeliasthere.com. That's right. Excellent. Yeah. And on Facebook. And Facebook. Yes, yeah. of course, you were telling me about Facebook yeah. too. That's great. Now, we're going to continue, and who are we going to continue with? Well, it would be Leo. Leo. And I we understand have a Leo we here have a Leo too. here. So, of course, Leos are a fire sign, and they're so dynamic. <laughs> They love the spotlight. They um, so enjoy oh, the largeness of life. <laughs> <laughs> now, if anyone has guessed who this could possibly be, it's Matt Carter, of course. <laughs> He's our Leo. <laughs> so what Matt can look forward to this year, and interesting that we had another guest talking about health, because that's the focus for Leo this year, mm -hmm. is basically looking at their physical health, their mental well-being, their emotional and spiritual health as well. So not so much the external world, but going within, taking care of one's own needs. Right. So and, mm -hmm. and really allowing um, for the optimum health for them for this year. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And then? On to Virgo. 
Virgo. Virgo. And uh, what's exciting about Virgo is it's a renewed passion this year. So it's finding their creative flow, it's finding what really makes them tick, what really makes them excited, wow. and realizing their dreams through their passions. So it's, uh, it's a great year for Virgo, of course, as well. Uh, Libra has an interesting year this year because they speak about their intuition and how that they can use their own inner voice to guide them and make decisions and that's really what uh, my work is all about yeah, is that psychic is. Yeah, ability yeah, yeah. and whatnot so uh, Libra is going to have that heightened awareness this year and okay. being able to pick up on those is that cues. your sign What's it's your, not it's my not sign. sign I'm I'm a few steps away <laughs> into Sagittarius okay, okay. so <laughs> I'll um, wait I'll wait I'll hold <laughs> So Scorpio then um, is interesting because they open up all kinds of new opportunities, especially around career and their life's work. So it's very much about um, trying new things but building a really strong foundation career-wise and realizing a lot of success in that this year. So of course with success in that area comes prosperity and financial abundance Which so they can look forward to that. That would be a great sign to have I would say. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, my favorite sign as most Sagittarians <laughs> will say about their own sign are the Sages <laughs> and um, essentially really good year for business, great year for building community and making community connections and really um, doing sort of service work as well. Right. So they're out there in the world doing what they love but also having a really positive impact as well and travel is a real key for this year for the Sages. I'm well, excited about that. Trip <laughs> oh. in the rain. Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then finally we come to the Capricorns and what all of this sort of upbeat and exciting momentum that a lot of the other signs have, the Capricorns are slowing down. They're taking things little by little, um, not taking on too much responsibility or obligation and they're really just allowing a nice relaxed pace so they'll have all good things come to them as well but they don't have to rush to it oh, well that's good that's my son's <laughs> sign actually oh, yes I'll have to take that home to him <laughs> let's see if he buys by it you never know <laughs> that's true <laughs> you never know that's great well it sounds to me that uh, it's good for all signs this absolutely year. and I think I'm part really of it is that. is understanding what makes us tick and this is one way this we can is do one it way definitely we can do oh, it. sorry Leo. just happy Leo it's here Leo. I'm, I'm very glad to hear that uh, from the sounds that my health is going to be paramount and awesome this year mm -hmm. so I won't stop drinking the 12 pack of dude beer and a bag of salt and vinegar chips for oh. breakfast which was primarily yeah breakfast of champions oh yeah, oh, yeah. You, you see what Andrew Roberts has for breakfast <laughs> Two bags of chips. <laughs> Anyways, so yes, so thank you very much, Anna. Thank you very much, thank Liberty, you. as well. For, thank um, you, Liberty. Thank exactly. you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And you know, it's, it's very true that, of course, That's a great. lot of people um, may not understand the zodiac sign, so it is nice to have you here to really uh, clear the areas about it. And uh, <laughs> again, uh, viewers who might not believe in astrology, they might want to uh, tour us a new one, but I tell you, this segment was far from a cancer on the airwaves. In fact, I think it was so good that we might actually win a Gemini award. You know, we'll be all sorts of famous, like that uh, Lord of the Rings actor, uh, Virgo Mortensen, or maybe that, uh, that martial arts guy, um, Bruce Lee, brah. I call Howie brah all the time. Anyways, the food segments, so I gotta get back, steal that. It's making me very hungry, so I gotta run home, uh, feed my uh, pet Scorpio, it's running around in my 60 gallon Aquarius, and then I get to eat, and I get some uh, Capricorn on the cob and a slice of Leo Meringue Pisces. I can't eat too much though, because then I'll have a uh, saggy terrius. A saggy post terrius. Oh. I think maybe my humor uh, or my future actually isn't too looking good right now, anyways. So, anyhow, um, <laughs> even though this humor is bad, um, really stoked. This episode of the show has been amazing for uh, really touching on a lot of topics that looks toward uh, positive outcomes for uh, the new year. We talked about Zodiac Dell. We also looked at health, leadership, education, nutrition, financial planning, personality, music, and spirit. So, I want to say a huge thank you to all of our guests here for the first show of 2013. Also, time for a big shout out to uh, Dodds Furniture for their support, and of course to Thrifty Foods for feeding the crew. And speaking of the crew, did you know that actually the vast majority of our crew is made up of volunteers, just like these guys over here? 
Jeremy's all stoked. All right, so yeah, so come on down, be part of the crew, like Happy Jer back there. Uh, if you want more information, contact our volunteer coordinator, Melissa Hall, at melissa.hall at sjrb.ca. Again, it's melissa.hall at sjrb.ca. All right, you can uh, follow Shaw TV, Central Vancouver Island, on Facebook and Twitter, and check out previous episodes of the show on YouTube. And we're going to send it out to one more song here from Shane Phillip. Again, you've seen the great tunes here in the intimate Shaw TV studio, but uh, I've had a chance to check them out at a couple of big festivals, like the amazing Big Time Out up in Cumberland, or the Victoria Scott Festival. And again, to hear his music with those huge crowds, again, sort of the tribal frenzy, it really is an amazing uh, stuff. So check them out, Down of the Queens. Check them out any chance you get, for sure. So here's the song to send us out called Earthshake. My name is Matt Carter. On behalf of all of us here at Shaw TV, thank you so much for watching. Furniture's The Show is brought to you by Dodds Furniture and Mattress.